And that word is, this year, 2015, is the year of what? Multiple blessings and testimonies. Amen. 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 This year, 2015, is the year of what? Let's say it. Multiple blessings and testimonies. Not just testimony. Testimonies. So I say, yes, okay, Lord, yes. That's the word you gave to us. So what? What next? The Lord said, that should be your discussion for today. So today, the Lord wants to unveil unto us what these multiple blessings and testimonies, what it is all about. How are you and how am I, how are we going to achieve multiple blessings and testimonies? Because when you are blessed, you testify of what the Lord has done for you. So, what are these testimonies? Or what are these blessings? It's not just blessing, but it's what? Multiple blessings. And the Lord has started it right from the first. But that's why I told you, be sensitive to what? The Spirit of God. Be what? Sensitive. Me. Be attentive. Don't sleep. Don't doze off. Don't allow your mind to sleep off. Be sensitive. Because that multiple blessings is going to happen. Because last year that was the year of great amazement. The Lord amazed us now. Now if you think the Lord now amazed us, how are we able to raise the amount of rent? Just to get a mini loss. It is God. You think it's just another. I just got to you. Give me money. And you just give me money. He's God. God surprised us. What we started as if we were all playing or joking. You understand? What do we want to do? We need to sell this. We need to do this. Let's do shopping. Let's do that. Let's do that. As if we were joking, isn't it? But we saw the result. That we're not joking. So this year of multiple blessings and testimony, how do you achieve it? Now, the Lord is going to make us understand this message, I would say, in three or four ways. The first one is that the most important thing God wants you to do, let us look at it in the book. I mentioned it sometime last year, but let's look at it in the book of Ma uh, uh, Luke. Turn about to the book of Luke, chapter 6. Luke, chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Luke or Luke. Depending on the way you want to pronounce it. Luke or Luke. How do you pronounce it? Luke. It's Luke. Okay. <laughs> Luke chapter 6. Are you there? Verse 38. I'm going to read. I want you to listen. Luke chapter 6. Verse 38. The key word there is give. For you to achieve the multiple blessings and testimonies that the Lord wants for you this year is to do what? Give. And you to understand what God is asking you to give very soon. He said, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye made, Without it shall be measured to you again. Now, what does that The Bible is saying, if you give, God is going to give you back. And this time, what God is going to give you back is going to be what? A good measure. Not only that, the good measure, just to get you, you got a bag, you understand? And replace the gift. Your gift in that bag, and the bag is full. No more gift to enter again. God said, that is a good measure. But not because there are still many other gifts to enter that bag. That bag will be shaken. When you shake the bag everywhere, what will happen? There will be what? Space. Is it not so? There will be space when you, when you, have, when you want to travel and you arrange your, your things in your bag. And you see the bag is full. And you see how some things. Just shake the bag. Zip the bag and shake it like this. 
Shake it, hit it like this, back, back, back. Open it, you see that there's space here. You can have more things. God said the blessing is going to give you is going to be good measure, it's full, but shaking together so that other space will enter. And not only that, after other space will enter, God said, no, I am not tired of that. I will give you more so that what? It will be running over. Do you understand the blessing that runs over? You pour water in a cup, and the cup is full, and you are still pouring water. And you are still pouring water. What will be happening? What will happen to that water? It will spill. Is it not? And so God is saying your better multiple blessings. Your blessing is going to what? It's going to spill over. That means you are going to have uncountable blessings. And I pray that will be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen. amen. Say a very big amen. amen. Don't say amen. 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 As if you are not even sure of it. As if you are not sure of it. Hey, I told you be sending what in the spirit. Watch out. God is doing something. God is doing something. God is doing something. So watch out. Now, what are you to give? What are you to give? Three things. Number one, give your time to God. Give your time to God, and God is going to give you what? Good measure, shake it together, and what? Run it over. Number two, give your talent to God. All the God, the gifts God has given to you, use it. I mean, give it back to God. Use it in God's service. And God is going to give you good measure, run together, and what? Run it over. And then number three, give your money, give your substance to God. And God is going to give you what? Good measure, shake it together, and what? Run it over. So the key word give here, we're going to look at these three various ways very quickly. Give your time to God. Give what? Your time to God. Some of us we don't have time. I don't have time. You need to give God time this year. Because the time, God has given you that time. You need to create time for God. You need to create time to talk to God during your quiet time, during your family devotion. You need to create time to read your Bible. You need to create time to be in the assembly of the children of God. If you really desire, as I discovered two of you on Saturday, if you desire to grow, you must not neglect the assembly of brethren. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. The Bible says, do not neglect the assembly together as the manner of some is. Talk about it with me. Hebrews. Quickly, let's look at it. Hebrews. So you need to give your time. Your time in prayer. Your time in God's service. In worshiping God. Find time out of no time. Verse 25. Hebrews 10, 25. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some means, but exalting one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching. What day? As the day of the Lord is approaching. Do not forsake. Give your time. God needs you. God cares about you. God wants you to fellowship with Him. And about the fellowship with God, fellowship with God involves two ways. With God in your quiet time, finding time to communicate with Him in prayers and in the study of His Word. And then number two, finding time out of no time to be in the assembly together of other brethren. Worshiping together with what? With other brethren. You must create time. You say, oh, pastor, I don't have time. I go to work. Oh, I go to school. Create time. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Shake it together. Running over. When you give your time, it's going to come out with what? With blessing. Blessing is going to follow. This year, start doing it. You'll see your blessing what? Running over. But this year, don't do it. Yes, I'm very sorry. It's not going to be a year of one blessing. It's going to be a year of nothing. And then you say, hey, it doesn't matter. After all, everything went wrong with you. No. It matters. And it doesn't matter. 
Uh, even though I know I experienced the multiple blessing, others are giving testimony. Eh, well, I see. I see. Thank God. No. God wants you to be part of what this blessing. You need to give your time to what to evangelize, to tell people about Jesus. You need to create time this year to tell people about Jesus. Because Jesus Christ said in, in the book of uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter, uh, uh, what's the game? Matthew chapter 28. Um, is it Matthew chapter 28? Yes. Matthew chapter 28, to read verses 19 and 20, where Jesus Christ said, Go and make disciples of what? Of all nations. You need to create time to do what? To evangelize. You need to give your time. Not just for prayer, not just for assembling, to get, finding time to assemble with other believers, but do what? To tell others about Jesus. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Are you there? So that read for you. Matthew 28, verse 19. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son. Of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you all the way even unto the end of earth. Teaching them to observe everything I have told you. So, you need to also preach your time, time to do what? To evangelize. You will be highly rewarded. If Christ says, I'm going to be with you always, in other words, He's going to be with you, not just be, look, be looking at you, He's going to be with you with the blessing. The blessing of God. You are giving your time. You're going to give you what? Good measure. Shake it together. And run it over. Press, press down. I say press down. Shake it very well. So the more space we pray, I pray that will be your portion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Give. Give your time. Give your time. Give your time. Give your time to God. And it's going to bless you in return. That's number one. Number two, give your talents or your gift. Now listen to me. God has given us <coughs> various talents. You know, I read the book of First Corinthians chapter 12, where we read from verse 4 to 11, where we talk about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hey, listen to me. We talk about what the gift of the Holy Spirit. God has given every gift so that you can profit. Whatever God has given you. If it is teaching, we're going to read that in the book of Romans chapter 12. He said, whatever God has given to you, use it for God's service. You have a talent to play violin, use it for God's service. You have a talent to sing, use it for God's service. You have a talent to play the keyboard, to play the piano, use it for God's service. Don't give it to yourself. Don't hold it. Don't say, no, 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 I don't know. You have, a, you have a talent of organizing things very well. When things are not in order, you want to organize it. You say, Pastor, I want to organize it. Use it. Use it. Your talent. Use it. Use your talent. Use your talent. Your talent, the gifts God has given to you. You say the Spirit of God. When we read in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, He said the Spirit gives God these gifts to various people. In order to profit the church. To profit the church. Now let us look at Ephesians. Ephesians. Quickly. Talk about the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. I think so. Should be chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Are you there? Ephesians chapter 4, we need to read 11 and 12. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 and 12. The Bible says, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. God has given these various gifts for you to edify, to encourage, to prepare the body, the body, the body, the church is the body of Christ. You understand? The church is the body of Christ. God has given you all these things to identify, to perfect, for the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry, the work is the work of the church. God has given you. Number three, quickly, give your substance or your money. 
Give your what? Substance. Or your money. Substance. Substance. There are various things you can give to the church. You can bring kids. You want to give to the church? You can bring it. You can bring cake. You bake cake. Ah! Which? I want to bring anything. No, we are not going to bring anything. Okay? Why? I just want this of you to eat it today. I want us to eat it. You can do cupcake. Bring it to the church. Substance. Substance. Oh, the church is not having a, a projector. Pastor, I give this pro projector to the church. Substance. And then you give your money. And this one is very serious. Yes, God owns the money. But God says you should give. And you give, it, you give your money in tithes. And what? Offerings. What can I ever give? They give what? Offerings. But the Lord also commands us to give, what? to give our tithe. What is tithe? 10% of your pocket money. The money you gained. And as a worker, of your salary. The salary you receive. I get you. The salary you receive at the end of the month or at the end of the week. The pay salary at the end of this week. God has to take 10%. The salary is 100%. Huh? God said, remove 90%, keep it in your pocket or in your bank, take 10% and what? Bring it to the church. That's your tithe. And apart from that, now, free will offering. God did not ask Cain and Abel to bring offering to him. You understand? They freely decided, let's offer offering to God. So offering is what? It's a free will gift to God. What does it mean? Even though it's a free will gift to God, it comes with what? With reward. It comes with what? With reward. When you give it freely, don't say it's free now. Is it by boss? After your pastor says it's free, it's free will offering. I'm not giving. And you have the, you have the one P in your pocket. There's one P in your pocket. There's two P. There's one pound. There's five pounds. There's ten pounds. There's twenty pounds in your pocket. The Spirit of God says you should give. You say Spirit of God. It's free will of free. I am not free. I'm not, come on, take it out of my pocket. I'm not willing. I'm not it's free will. You, your word says it's free will. I'm not giving it. Then you are stopping your multiple blessings. The God, the Lord is not telling you to bring millions. God is looking for what? Faithfulness. 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 I started giving offering. When I understood what it means to give, I started giving offering since 19. 88 and I'm not used to the offering. And in 1990, I increased my offering from 10%. And since then, I've not been giving 10%. I've been giving God surplus more than 10%. All God requires is what? It's 10%. If you want to give more than that, it's a covenant between you and God. That's a covenant between me and God. I say, God, 10% is too small for me. I want to give it more than 10%. And I must keep it. If I fail to keep it, God is going to go to Mr. Man, you said you want to give. I asked you 10%. You told me 10% is too small for me. So where is it? Why are you giving me 10%? God is going to hold you responsible. You understand? So all God requires what is 10%. Now look, let us look at the book of Malachi. Let me close. For now. The book of Malachi. Old Testament, the last book in the Bible. In the Old Testament, brother. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. I'm giving you the message that the Spirit of God says I should give it to you. So it's better for you to decide. Some of you are students here. And other you have money, you have pocket money. They give you money, pocket money. From that pocket money, my daughter asked me, said, hey, Father, what you said, you said they have pocket money. Uh, but you don't allow us to give. Out of our pocket money, you all give us money again to do offering. That they want to give their own. That you want to pay your tithe for I said, yes, you can pay your tithe for I said, but offering, I am your father, I decide to give you offering to give to the church. But if you want to give offering in your pocket money, you are fine. But if you say you want to pay tithe from your pocket money that I give to you, it's fine. When you lend it when you are young, you understand? From one pound and five pounds you are receiving. You learn to give ten percent. Five pounds. How much is ten percent of five pounds? Fifty P. How much ten percent of hundred pounds? Ten pounds. If you learn to give that now, 
Or, in terms of one part, what? In terms of one part, what is it? Uh, I'm asking you. 10% of one part. That's what? 10 p. Eh? 10 p. 10 p. So, if your pocket money, your money is being able is one pound, and on Sunday you bring 10 p. If you learn to do that, as long as you have, when you now grow up, and the Lord at the end of the month gives you one million pounds, you will not struggle to bring 100,000 pounds to the church. You won't struggle. But if you are struggling now to give 10p out of your one pound, the day God will bless you in a week with 50,000 pounds for you to withdraw 5,000 and say, ah, ah. He says, I'm crazy. I would like to take this whole 5,000 and give to the church. No way. God will understand. 5,000, 50,000. 10% is 5, five. For what? Am I the only one? Who, who best? Even the pastor is not giving up the 5,000 pounds in the job. Well, then, I mean, let me give 100 pounds. This 100 pounds is 600. Give 100 pounds. You feel you're giving something. You know what you have done? You have stolen 4,900 from God's money. And God is going to hold you responsible. Malachi, and I'm going to run the first one. Malachi chapter 3. Are you there? Yes. Just follow me as I read I'm going to start reading from verse 8. And I will end in verse 12. 8 to 12. Now listen, though. Listen attentively as I read. He said, Will a man rob God? Will a man steal from God? That's what it means. I want to understand. Will a man steal from God? I told you, I just told you. You have 50,000 pounds in a week, or in a month, or in a year. And you said 5,000 pounds is just too much. And you decided to give God 100 pounds. It is, that's a lot of money. To give 100 pounds or something, ah, it's a lot of money. And you added the 4,900 with your own money. I say you have stolen God's money. That's what I told you. And at least God is explaining it here now. In Malachi. Will a man rob God? Verse 8. Yet ye have robbed me. You have stolen from me. He said, But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a cause. Ye have robbed me, even this whole nation, not only one person, the whole nation of Israel. In verse 10, God now said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, into the bank of the church. He said that there may be meat in my house. Listen very carefully. He said, approve me now, hear it, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Does that click to you? Does that click? Did that click something? Now listen, something has not clicked to you there. What is said in the book of Luke? Huh? I saw the click now. Give and it will be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, what? Run it over. And now in Babaka, now listen. Luke was New Testament. This is what? Old Testament. But they are what? The Word of God. So that's the thing that even in, in the Old Testament, God has said, People are stealing my money. And Jesus, like when we read in you, it was the mouth of Jesus that said to give. Give. It shall be given unto you. Good measure, press that. Boom, boom.
boom, shake the bag, 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 and space will there. Shake it together, create more space, and put it, and it will run over. God said in Malachi also, before the New Testament, He said, Prove me now here with, say the Lord of hosts. Who said it? Who is saying this? Who is saying it? The Lord. Look at your Bible, don't look at me. Oh, that's why I'm reading it. He said, Say the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, can you see? Multiple blessing. This year is your year of multiple blessings and testimony. He said, If I will not pour out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. God will bless you beyond measure. God is going to embarrass you with blessing. You will say, Ah, God, hey, this is too much. God said, Yes, I'm, I am the one that is willing to bless you. I am blessing you. Why? Because you refuse to steal from me. Because you are giving me my tithe and my offering. Because you are giving me your time. Because you are giving me your talent. And now you are giving me your sort. No, I'm going to bless you. Don't tell me, don't stop me. Because you are a faithful servant. And I'm going to bless you. And then in verse 12, he said, And all nations, not just the United Kingdom, all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightful land, see the Lord of hosts. You will be a source of blessing to others. The blessing will overflow. And I pray that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So you need to give God your time, your talent, your substance, and money. To God. Let's bow our heads talk to you. I don't know if you even understand what God is saying. To be fair, you're not looking at me. Maybe you don't understand what God is saying. But let me put it in a clear term. Just as we read the Bible. What God is saying is that give your time, give your talents, give your money or your short terms to Him in His heart for the profit of the church, for those in the church to gain, for the house of God to gain something from you. And I'm going to bless you with multiple blessings. In a nutshell, that's what I'm saying. Well, if you say no, I'm not going to give you God, I will give you my talent, but I won't give you my time. I will give you only my time, I won't give you my talent, I won't give you my money. Or I will give you only my money, I won't give you my talent, though. I won't give you my time, though. then you have to your blessing. The Lord wants you to give the truth. Ask the Lord God, please grant me the grace to give my time, my talent, and my substance for money onto your house, into your house, for the work of the ministry, for the glory of the name. Pray to God, pray to God. Pray to God for yourself, well, don't do it with a prayer, pray, 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 pray. pray. Pray that Lord will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. And now listen to me. If you are hearing me, any part of the world, you are hearing me right now, and you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, now say, let me, you will just be like Cain. Whatever you give, if you are not born again, either you give your time, either you give your talent, either you give your money or whatsoever, if you're not, you are just like Cain. Because God must accept you first before you accept all things you are going to give unto Him. So you need to take the first step of surrendering to Jesus. And then that blessing will come to you. And then that everything will not be meaningful to you. So when I was to to Jesus Christ, I want you to this year, 2015, don't allow it to go back. This Sunday, right now, surrender to Jesus. Ask the Lord Jesus to have mercy upon you. Say, Jesus, I want to give you my time. I want to give you my talent. I want to give you my substance and my money. I want to give it to you in your heart. But Lord God Almighty, I have not surrendered to you. But today, I surrender to you. I say I'm a terrible sinner. Lord, please forgive me my sin. Today I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Lord God Almighty, write my name in the book of life and grant me the grace to give my time, talent, and my substance and money into your bosom in your house. Pray that prayer to God. Pray that prayer to God. Pray that prayer to God. And if you are a backsliding Christian, you need to say, Lord, I am coming back home. I'm coming back home. I've not been giving my time, my talent, or my money to you. But I say, Lord, I'm very sorry. Today I repent and I, 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 I will dedicate my life unto you. You are my Lord and my Savior. The grace to give my time, my talent, and my substance of money unto you. Grant me. Right in the church, pray that prayer for yourself. Pray that prayer for yourself. 
as the Lord to heaven. Lord, we thank you for your word. I thank you for your children who have had your word today. And I pray, oh God, that even as they consider and that they decide to give their time, their talent, and their substance or money unto you, Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you are certain. And Lord, according to your word, I am praying in the name of Jesus Christ that your word will become real in our lives in Jesus' name. As many who have surrendered unto you today, Lord God Almighty, we are praying for them that Lord, they will not go back to the world. And Lord God Almighty, whatever they give to you this year, oh God, will be meaningful. We, we attract your blessing even as you have spoken your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know you have heard and have answered our prayer. As a church, oh God, help your children. Many of them are young in faith. Lord, I pray you help them. That Lord God Almighty, this person will sink into them. It will not just pass like that and without them, oh, I don't know that's all that's happening here. Lord, the grace, oh God, to obey you, to do your will. Grant to these young believers, to the glory of your name, in Jesus' name. And Lord God Almighty, for as many who are not here today, wherever they are, Lord, we pray they won't miss the worship for next Sunday, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. Receive all the praise, receive all the glory, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.